everybody. How are you doing today? What is going on? Thank you for tuning in to another week of Who Gives a Dram. We're here with episode 77 of the show, a brand new whiskey to review. We're back on YouTube this week, so hopefully, you know, you guys are watching this video when it comes out on Thursday, May 5th. Um, new whiskey this week. Again, like I just said, we're, we're reviewing a whiskey that we're not only reviewing a whiskey that I've never had, but we're reviewing a whiskey, a type of whiskey, a type of whiskey that I've never had. Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, Penelope 13 year American light whiskey. Um, and I'm super excited to crack this thing open and to review it and just to taste it and see what the hell uh, Mike and Danny are doing over at Penelope. Um, but before we get into the whiskey, I want to quickly remind you guys the best way to support the show is to subscribe on, on whatever platform you're listening to um, and leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Thank you to everyone who has left me a review in the past few days and weeks. It means the world to me. Thank you very much. Um, if you haven't yet, you know, that's how we that's how we defeat the algorithm here at Who Gives a Dram. That's how we um that's how we get noticed. That's how the charts notice us and it works because um I've been getting ranked on the uh, Apple Podcast food category like within the top 100. I mean, just for a tiny bit of time, but I've been ranked um pretty consistently in the month of April, which was fucking awesome that's huge there are 10 probably ten thousand podcasts alone in the food category and apple Podcasts, and we were ranked that high so that is a huge deal to me and that is only because you guys support the show you guys subscribe and download the episodes and listen to me uh blabber on every week about whiskey and about whatever else is on my mind so thank you very much um, it's very humbling, uh, to get those notifications that we are ranked on this, um, on this podcast because I'm used to it being bourbon with friends. Bourbon with friends is ranked all the time. Top five whiskey podcasts in the country, but to have who gives a dram up there as well is, um, it, again, it just means, it means the world to me. So thank you very much. And then make sure you're following on all socials, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. who gives a dram. Be back getting hopefully getting out some reels this week, some um some Instagram content, some TikTok content now that I got video back uh on YouTube. But um but yeah, man, that's that's really all I got for business. This podcast as always is brought to you by the Grapevine Media, www.thegrapevinemedia.com. Make sure you guys are checking us out over there. You can find my other podcast or one of my other podcasts, because I got tree. Uh, Popcorn Pillow Talks over there. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness comes out, uh, well, technically Friday, but I'm going to go see it Thursday, May 5th, uh, with my buddies Matt and Zach. I hope Zach's coming. And Kale, my brother. And we're going to recap the entire movie probably after, right after we see it Thursday night. If not Friday or Saturday, we'll recap the movie. So we'll have a whole non spoilers and spoilers. Uh, discussion about Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and our thoughts and what we think happened and why what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it. That'll all be up over on Popcorn Pillow Talk. You can find that through Grapevine Media. You can follow that on Twitter at Popcorn PT Pod, TikTok, Popcorn Pillow Talk, um, and YouTube, Popcorn Pillow Talk. Um, that's where most of our content is, along with every other um podcast platform when we release long form podcasts that podcast is more of just kind of when we record we record there's no consistency to it but it's very fun and that gives me an outlet to talk just movies and tv which i love so much uh speaking about tv i just got into the show lucifer a few weeks ago and it is taking over my life i'm on season two episode like seven um if you're a fan of lucifer You'll know what I'm talking about when I say they uh, the mom is back in on Earth, and uh, it's just it's very funny, and I love Lucifer. I love the guy who plays Lucifer. Who's the guy who plays Lucifer? Who plays Lucifer? Um, Tom Ellis. What a handsome, handsome sob Tom Ellis is. Jesus, his Wikipedia page. He's just staring daggers into my soul. Of course, he's Welsh. 
That is, uh, of, of course, he's Welsh. Oh, they had a Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover on the Arrowverse? And he was in it? I'm going to have to YouTube that. Um, yeah, that is probably, now he's probably in my top, definitely top 10 most handsome guys on the planet. He has to be. He plays a, He plays an awesome Lucifer. But um, we don't need to talk about my, my man crushes this week. I mean, we could, but. I mean, I, I technically could. It's just me in this room. I can talk about whatever I want. But I want to uh, quickly... So what we're going to talk about this week, um, and everything's going to be timestamped below. So if you just want to jump to parts, if you want to jump to the whiskey review, I will timestamp it below. I want to quickly preview the UFC card this weekend because it's a huge card, and I think it has huge implications moving forward, especially because a large name happens to be in the division that the championship bout is taking place in. So I want to quickly uh, run on that. I don't think there's any other news that I have currently um, besides Elon Musk buying Twitter. That happens a while ago, but I haven't commented on it yet. I don't think I have anything to say about that. I just hope that on Twitter, what needs to happen is they just need to let the bots, they need to do something about the bots that are on there. I, and all, they also need to do something about spoiler talk because already it's Monday or Tuesday, May 3rd, when I'm recording this. Dr. Strange is in two days. The press screens were yesterday, and there's already so many spoilers out on the interwebs that it's like... The Marvel movies can't be spoiled because that's like the whole point of going to them, of going to an MCU movie, is getting those, whether it's a cameo or a spoiler or how it's connecting to everything else. That's the whole point of a Marvel movie. So for it to get spoiled on the internet is bullshit. I remember I I faintly saw Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man in No Way Home while I was sitting on Twitter in the theater waiting for the movie to start. So that got spoiled for me while I was literally in the theater just waiting for time to go by. Because I get to those early two hours early because I'm a nerd. And Elon Musk needs to do something about those bots and those spoilers. So my suggestion, and this is just coming off the top of my head. I haven't thought about this all day until right now. My suggestion is this. If Elon Musk catches you, if Elon Musk catches someone who's controlling bot accounts or is spoiling, he, they need to go up in a prototype SpaceX rocket ship they don't have a choice so that way if it blows up it blows up but there's also a chance it doesn't blow up and it's just a cool ride but you have to take that chance it's like russian roulette you have to take that chance so that's what that would be my suggestion to elon musk now that he's twitter the owner of twitter 46 billion dollars later and i think that's what he should do with everyone who's running bot accounts and people who spoil movies on twitter before the movie comes out and that accounts for facebook too. that accounts for anyone who spoils anything i hate that uh but yeah let's okay let's so right now we're going to talk about a little ufc and then we'll get into the whiskey and then we'll call it an episode um this weekend ufc 274 in phoenix arizona it is uh, Charles Oliveira, the UFC lightweight champion of the world, taking on Justin Gaethje, who is probably the number one contender. Yep, the number one contender. Um, it's a pretty freaking good card, and I want to just preview it bottom to top really quick. Um, we're starting off the card with two legends, two guys who epitomize the mid to late 2000s and early 2010s of the UFC, Donald Cowboy Cerrone versus Joe Lozon. Uh, Donald Cerrone is currently a minus 170 favorite. Joe Lozon is plus 150 underdog. It's a lightweight bout, so they're taking place at 155. I don't remember the last time Cowboy Cerrone won a fight. Um, we can pull up his record right now. He's 36 and 16 in the UFC. Um, he has 10 wins by knockout, 17 wins by submission, 9 wins by decision. He might hold the record for the most finishes. That might be Charles Oliveira right now. I'm not really too sure. But um, Cerrone... Oh, they don't give his... Oh, no. Do they? So he fought... He Well, he fought Justin Gaethje back in September 14, 2019. He has way too many... He actually has fought killers. If we go back to Donald Cerrone's 
uh, resume. We'll start with, okay, November 10th, 2018, Donald Cerrone fights Mike Perry and wins in round one via submission. Uh, that was a great fight. And then January 19th, 2019, so just a few months later, he fights Alexander Hernandez on UFC Fight Night on ESPN number one, the first ever UFC on ESPN, and he beats Alex Hernandez, who at the time was an up-and-coming prospect that was supposed to be the next best thing. Cerrone beat him by TKO. He head-kicked him, and then he ground and pounded him. So that was that. And then Cerrone beat um, Ally Quinta by decision. Five round decision that was a main event. That was when Dad Cerrone was in full force, and then they faced him against a almost prime Tony Ferguson, in which Tony Ferguson KO'd him in two rounds. Um, and then they faced him against Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje knocked him out in a round. Then they faced him against Conor McGregor at UFC 246, and Conor McGregor knocked him out in 40 seconds. Then they faced him against Anthony Pettis in which Anthony Pettis won a unanimous decision. Then they faced him against Nico Price. Um, no, they, I don't think he fought Nico Price. The last time he won was versus Morono, or the last time he fought was against Morono, and that was May 8, 2021. Um, so that was a while ago, and Cerrone hasn't fought since. I'm pretty sure this is probably, this is probably going to be Donald Cerrone's retirement fight. I hope it is. <clears throat> Because I don't want Donald Cerrone to go out on his shield. He's too much of a legend. He, we just need him to, you know, fight this fight and then retire and just ride off into the sunset like Donald Cerrone should. Um, that being said, I'm gonna pick Joe Lozon in this fight. I don't know why. I just, I, I, I it's tough to pick Donald Cerrone in any fights now. He's just an old warrior, an old cowboy. Uh, I'm going to pick Joe Lozon. So if you're looking to to bet on these fights and you, for some reason, take my UFC advice, put money on Joe Lozon. That's what I would do. He's plus 150. Next fight is light heavyweight. Um, Shogun Rua. Mauricio Shogun Rua versus Open State Peru. Uh, o- OSP is a minus 235. Shogun's plus 190. I'm sure OSP will probably win this. He's a bit more versatile. Um, although Shogun probably wins on the feet, he's just an old guy and that's it. He's an old guy. That's it. And, uh, OSP is still fairly young, still fairly fresh, still gets wins here and there. Uh, so I'm going to take OSP probably by decision if I had to guess. Uh, but the third fight on the card is probably the people's main event. This is going to be such a banger of a fight. And I always forget it's this weekend is Michael Chandler versus Tony Ferguson. Michael Chandler is a minus 410 favorite. Tony Ferguson's a plus 310 underdog. Definitely not bad to put uh, money on Tony Ferguson on this. I wouldn't put too much, though. Uh, He's such a large underdog that it just makes sense to put money at this point. But Michael Chandler's probably going to win that. Uh, Yeah, there's no... Tony Ferguson has a chance against Michael Chandler, I suppose. There's not... It's not out of the realm of possibility that Michael Chandler... Uh, or Tony Ferguson loses this fight. But Michael Chandler, I mean, if they fight 10 times, Michael Chandler probably wins nine times right now. And uh, I'm rooting for Tony Ferguson. I want Tony Ferguson to be back in full force, like the uh, El Kukui back a few years ago when he was beating everybody. But I just don't know if that's going to happen or not. Uh, Michael Chandler, former Bellator champion, two-time lightweight champion, I believe, at Bellator. I could be wrong about that. But, um, you know, he's 1-2 and in the UFC. Um, he beat Dan Hooker, he lost to Gaethje, he lost to Oliveira, but, uh, you know, he's fighting the best of the best, I think Tony Ferguson is definitely past his prime, he's old, but he is El Kukui, he is Tony Ferguson, I'm gonna say Michael Chandler, uh, most likely by decision, um, I don't see Tony Ferguson outpointing Michael Chandler. It could happen, though. You never know. They're both crazy. They both like to stand and bang. They both are. They, they like to get hit in the face. My, Tony Ferguson kicks steel poles for fun. So it's going to be a great fight. Um, If you want a risky bet, definitely put some money on Tony Ferguson at plus 310. That's what I would do. Um, But I would be 
But just know that's risky and that's probably not going to happen. But it'll be a nice payout if he does win. And plus, if Tony Ferguson wins, I think everybody wants him to win. I mean, he's lost three or four in a row now, so everyone wants to see Tony Ferguson get back on the, uh, you know, in the run for, you know, contendership in the lightweight division. So um, Michael Chandler also first team all body. The guy's bodied up, chiseled, kind of like me. Um, Co-main event: Rose Namajunas versus Carla Esparza rematch from a few years ago. Uh, Rose is a minus two twenty favorite, as she should be. I just am. I've never been impressed with Carla Esparza. I've, you know, she fights like in prelims and maybe first fight of main cards, and she's fighting not. I mean, she's fighting good competition, but Rose is on a different level than almost every woman on the planet, not named Valentina Shevchenko. So I'm definitely taking Rose in this fight, uh, probably by TKO if I had to guess, um, and then she'll probably, hopefully, Joanna. Beats Zhang Wali coming up. I'm pretty sure that's a, a that's a rumored fight. You want a young Jake chick? Actually, I don't know. I don't know if Rose should fight Joanna again. But anyways, I don't know what's next for Rose after this. But I'm taking definitely taking Rose. She's a, like I said, she's a minus two twenty favorite, and that's an easy pick for me. I don't think Carla Esparza has a chance. Uh, but the main event of the evening is let me fix my mic here. The main event of the evening is Charlie Olives, Charles Charles Oliveira, the lightweight champion, the reigning and defending lightweight champion of the world, is fighting Justin Gaethje. Um, this is a banger of a fight. Oliveira is currently a minus one sixty five, Gaethje a plus one forty five. Basically a pick 'em. I mean, with the with the uh, champion getting a slight favoritism in here, and. Honestly, I think the odd makers being a little bit generous. Um, if you look back at these two at at these two gentlemen's previous fights, and Charles Oliveira said it best. He said it at a press conference like a week ago or during a media event with his sunglasses on inside and his blonde hair and his perfect teeth, his perfect veneers, speaking Portuguese, you know, saying, look it. I'm paraphrasing, obviously, but... Charles Oliveira said, when Justin Gaethje fought Michael Chandler, he couldn't knock him out. It went, it went the distance. He won by decision. When I fought Michael Chandler, I knocked him out with my left hand. That should tell you everything you need to know. And he's saying this in Portuguese, looking all tan, looking all beefy, blonde hair, perfect teeth, championship built around his shoulder. Can you argue that? Really? Justin Gaethje is supposed to be some phenomenal striker, power puncher. Oliveira is known for his submissions, yet he's the one who knocks out Michael Chandler with his left hand. I mean, the man's got a point. And Charles Oliveira is sneaky, one of the best lightweights of all time. If he beats Gaethje here, definitely top two lightweights of all time. I think you have to put him up there. Um... Obviously, people say Khabib. I don't know. I mean, Khabib is great, but I don't know if he's GOAT status. But, I mean, Charles Oliveira is a monster. A utter monster. Let's look at Charles Oliveira's recent fights. I mean, he is just, he's 32-8, and eight, so he does have some losses on his record. You know, 5'10", 74-inch reach. 63% of his wins are by submission, 28% by KO. He is just a beast like the best brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner definitely in a lightweight division potentially in the um potentially in the in the company he just beat dustin poirier by submission in round three before that he knocked out michael chandler to win the belt before that he uh uh decisioned tony ferguson i think that was to win the interim no I don't remember what that was for, but they fought, and he beat him. Then he beat uh, Kevin Lee by submission. Then he beat uh, Gordon. I remember that fight. Yeah, KO'd, KO'd him in the first round. Nick Lentz, he won. I mean, this guy, Charles Oliveira, has been around forever. The last time this man lost was against Paul Felder, December 2nd, 2017, by KO. 
So that was the last time this guy lost. Paul Felder, the Irish Dragon. Um, but he's fought consistently, and he's fought beasts for the last... Oh, man. He lost to Max Holloway when he was at featherweight. Uh, he, almost 10 years this guy's fought. The best of the best. And the same can be said for Justin Gaethje, but Charles Oliveira has way more tools to utilize in this fight. Justin Gaethje's a phenomenal wrestler, but he's not going to take down Charles Oliveira. You know that. Because if Charles Oliveira takes your back, you're, the, the fight is over, and it's not, it's, there's no if ands, or buts about it. And I get scared because, listen, Justin Gaethje... Charles Oliveira is right. Justin Gaethje couldn't knock out Michael Chandler. Charles Oliveira hit him with a left hook and finished him. So the man's got a point, but but at the same time, it's Justin Gaethje. He's a beast. He's very fun to watch. He's not my favorite in the world, but it's going to be a great fight. I put my money on Oliveira. I think Oliveira is going to uh, finish Gaethje within two rounds. Um and I think he's going to move on to probably fight, who knows, maybe Conor McGregor, maybe maybe Islam Makachev, probably Islam. That's a much better fight than this than Oliveira versus Gaethje, by the way. Uh, I just don't know if I see anyone beating Charles Oliveira anytime soon, and I'm happy he's champion. He's been in the company for a long time. He's had some ups, he's had some downs, and now he's the champion of the world when no one ever thought Charles Oliveira would ever be champion, uh, whether he was fighting at featherweight and or now at lightweight. Um, and honestly, I love to watch him fight because he's so technical and he's so crisp. No wasted movement is on Charles Oliveira. His jabs are straight. His right hands are straight. He'll throw a nice tight uh, hook every once in a while, and then he'll go in for a tight takedown if he so sees fit. Doesn't have the best takedowns in the world, but if he even gets you into a, you know, a, a Muay Thai clinch or against the fence in any type of clinch format, I mean, he choked out Dustin Poirier his last fight by riding him like a backpack because they were against the fence. Dustin Poirier tries to turn his shoulder against the fence to get him off. Charles Oliveira goes the other way, hops on, you know, puts, kind of straddles his leg a little bit, um, and then finds an opening to just jump on his back and just take his neck. So that's my prediction of UFC 274, Oliveira versus Gaethje. I think that's going to be a fantastic fight, um, and I'm looking forward to it this weekend. Uh, there weren't there weren't really any fights for me to go over this weekend. Tyson Fury won. Um, that was a good one. Um, Cheeto Vera really beat up on Rob Font. Shout out Rob Font, Boston guy. But uh, Cheeto Vera is the real deal. He he beat Rob Font by unanimous decision. I want to say, pretty sure it was unanimous decision. Let's check on the old Google. Yep decision it just says um Cheeto Vera is probably going to fight Jose Aldo next if I had to guess if che if Jose Aldo doesn't fight for the title against Aljamain but that's where we at that's where we're at in the MMA world uh, I'm glad we can quickly discuss that but let's get into the whiskey now so again I'm going to timestamp all this below so if you're tuning in now I just got done talking about all my UFC stuff now we're going to get into the whiskey stuff and like I said today at the top of the episode, this is a first for me. This is a first for me. Not only have I never had Penelope Founders Reserve 13-year American Light Whiskey, it's sealed, by the way. We're uncracking it. We're uncorking it today. Or we're cracking it today, not uncracking it. I've never had light whiskey at all, ever. Never had light whiskey in my life. So this is going to be a first for me. I don't know what to expect I've I've talked to some people who have had it. Some people reached out to me when I posted a picture of it. Yada, yada, yada. Um, I've seen some reviews on it. Um, not many reviews. Not many reviews. So hopefully you guys tune into this if you're just watching on YouTube by mistake and you, you enjoy this review. This is an authentic review of Penelope 
13 year American light whiskey. This is about as authentic, authentic as it gets. Cause I've never even had light whiskey before and I'm a whiskey guy. So, um, let's talk about a little bit about w- what light whiskey is while I crack this. So basically, and this is in layman's terms. All right. I don't, I don't pretend to be some type of whiskey expert. This is just kind of what I think it is or what it might be or what I've read or what I've watched. Essentially, what light whiskey is, it's distilled between 160 and 190 proof. And it's distilled in either used oak barrels or new charred oak barrels, maybe. Um, Whoops, get this out of here. Aged in used or uncharred new oak barrels. No length of time specified. Must have been distilled after 1968 to receive the light whiskey designation. If it contains less than 20% straight whiskey, it is it is a blended light whiskey. This is not. This is just American light whiskey. It is, I'm pretty sure, the mash bill is 99% corn and 1% malted barley. Uh, but light whiskey came to prominence when uh, whiskey was kind of fading out of pop culture in the 70s, 60s, and 70s. People wanted to drink light drinks that didn't really taste like anything to make cocktails, vodkas, gins, clear spirits. People wanted to be drinking at this time. Um, so the big whiskey companies needed something to counteract that. So they thought, why don't we up the proof and why don't we lighten the color by aging it in used barrels or uncharred barrels uh, to kind of replicate what we're seeing with the other spirits and vodkas and gins, those clear spirits, with you know, vodka sodas, vodka crayons are big in the 70s, you know what I'm saying? Um, no more dark liquors, no more rum, that's for pirates, no more whiskey, that's for farmers or people who beat their wives, I don't know, at the time. <laughs> it's, it's inappropriate. Um but whiskey wasn't for the general public, and that's just how it was. That was the trends. You know how we're going through TikTok right now? That was the trends back then. Um, so basically, people wanted to, the whiskey companies wanted to replicate this. They found it didn't work. That's when they started experimenting in the 80s with things like single barrel, small batch, special releases, things like that. Blands comes around, Booker's comes around, yada, yada, yada. We get to what we have in whiskey now. Um, but a lot of the light whiskey, although it was used in blending, you know, um, other whiskeys, other bourbons, some light whiskey was, was laid to rest and let to age. And then some distilleries started producing straight up light whiskey, not bourbon, not rye, not blended, just, just light whiskey. Um, The whole point of light whiskey is it's, it's, it's a lighter spirit. It's a lighter whiskey. It's not going to impart on the particular, particularly oak characteristics of bourbon, rye, some things like that. What I've been told, what I've read is that light whiskey is very sweet, which I would expect with 99% corn. It is very uh, velvety, got like an oily mouthfeel, Vanilla, creme brulee, things like that, like frosting, like these are these are the things that all seem to to revolve around light whiskey. That's right up my alley. I like a sweeter bourbon. I like those sweeter notes. So I have I have a lot of ex. I I almost I don't want to say I have high expectations for this. I do because it's Mike and Danny and Penelope. They're they're the bomb. And again, Mike and Danny have both been on. Uh, Bourbon with Friends. So if you go to Bourbon with Friends channel and you search Penelope, they were on one of our first episodes of season two in the beginning of this year, and they were fantastic. It was a great interview. Um, that's so. With Penelope, this is I believe MGP juice. Uh, I think it says distilled in Indiana. Penelope Bourbon Founders Reserve showcases rare and unique barrels we were fortunate to find. The first release in this series highlights a collection of light whiskey barrels 
distilled from corn at Seagram's Indiana in 2008. Seagram's Indiana is now MGP. Uh, aged in second fill oak barrels, this amazing spirit brings out savory vanilla notes with hints of with a hints of cinnamon and creme brulee. Is that a spelling error on the bottle, Mike and Danny? This amazing spirit brings out savory vanilla notes with a hint of cinnamon and creme brulee. I think that's a spelling error. We need to get Word. We need to get Microsoft Word up in here. Is that a spelling error? Did I just did I just Did I just find something that no one else has fought has found yet? I don't know. I think I did. I think that's a spelling error on the bottle. I'm obviously I'm kidding. It's not a big deal at all. I spell words wrong all the time. So Danny, Mike, if you guys are listening to this, I don't, I don't, I'm not actually hating on it. Um, but it's, it has to be, it has to be a spelling error, which is okay. We can spell words wrong or we can use the wrong words. That's okay. Uh, but co- pulling directly from their website, that's basically what it says. Yeah, that is a spelling error. This amazing spirit brings out savory vanilla notes with a hint of cinnamon and creme brulee. That's what it says on the website. This amazing spirit brings us savory vanilla notes with a hint of. So that's okay. So that's, I'm going to say this is a unique bottle. And uh, the fact that there's an extra S on hints just shows that it's unique. And Mike and Danny were way more focused on the juice that's going in to this bottle than the stupid label. That's what that means. It is pretty funny, though. <laughs> Uh, 13 years old. This is a special blend. Founders Reserve. Mike and Danny being the founders of Penelope. It's their blend of this light whiskey, of the barrels of this light whiskey. And I want to taste it. So let's uncork it. Solid. Solid. By the way, this bottle, I'll put it up against the uh, camera real quick if you're watching on YouTube is just beautiful the roses the flowers on it the nice green color the p in penelope i love penelope's bottles top five bottles in the game i don't want to drink too much of this and i'll tell you why i can already smell it holy shit this is 128.9 proof 64.2 percent alcohol that is insane it's got the color of like a scotch though. Scotch is a lot of the times lighter. I think it's because it's not aged for as long. This is a very old whiskey. This is 13 years old, but it really has that color of a scotch on it. And I, the only reason I bring up the color is because it's very interesting because it's not a bourbon. It's not a rye. It's not a blended whiskey. It's a light whiskey. So you would think, okay, it's going to be a little bit lighter. Yep. 99% corn, 1% malted barley on the, on the palate or on the, uh, mash bill i bought this for 100 bucks we'll say that's i think that's what it usually msrp is around uh i'm pretty sure breaking bourbon said 80 bucks or 90 bucks we'll say 80 to 100 bucks i think 100 dollars is gonna be standard if you can find this anywhere um but i'm excited to try this man this is again a first for me never i've never given a sniffy poo or a tasty poo to american uh to any type of light whiskey so let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's give this a nose. I didn't give it much time to rest. It is a neck pour, but I don't care. We're getting into it. Oh, wow. That's very strong. Straight freaking fr- like sugary vanilla. You know what this ta- This smells like whipped cream frosting. And I can, I can tell you that. As a matter of fact, because I had whipped cream frosting cake last night for my dad's birthday. Shout out to Moose. Happy birthday. Pretty sure he's like 87 or 88 years old. Just kidding. He's like 57, I think. But this is like whipped cream frosting to a T, like vanilla. Wow. There's nothing other than corn and vanilla and sweetness on that. Holy moly. 
This was released last at the end of last year, by the way. Um, and it's really the only one of the only light whiskeys that I think is like almost widely available. I don't see too many light whiskeys on the shelf. It's very light, like it's, it's, of course it's light, but the legs are running down the glass fairly quick. If you think about like, um, there's that tiniest bit of wood shavings in there, but. If you think about like creme brulee, vanilla whipped cream frosting, like like re- like a cool whip, cool whip, vanilla with wood shavings, little and corn, like like cracked corn, that's what this glass is. That's exactly what this smells like. This is a great nose. And it's not smelling like the proof point that it is. It doesn't smell like 135 proof. There's a little bit of darkness in there, really on the back, but it's still sweet. It's like a molasses. If you really search in the back, there's molasses in there. And maybe the hintus, hintus raisin or darker fruit. But it's mainly light, inviting, sweet notes, and it's just sweet. There's no floral. There's no fruit. There's not a lot of wood. It's just sweet with a hint of wood, a little bit of darkness on the back, but it's all sweetness. It's all a bunch of savory, sweet, brown sugar, whipped cream, just very nice things in a glass. Yeah, I'm not getting any fruit on this. I'm not getting any type of of florally notes. There's definitely no baking spices in there. At least I don't think. Very good. Very good. And this is my first sip of whiskey in a few days, so bear with me if I cough. But let's get into it. Let's get right into the let's get right into the pal. I gotta stop smelling this. Um to another week of Who Gives a Dram. Thank you for tuning in. Penelope, thirteen year American light whiskey. Down the gullet. Here we go. Cheers. Oh, that finish, though. And, of course, a truck goes whizzing by. Hope you get arrested. Um, That finish, though, is just cake. Cake, 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 cake. I've been told I have cake. Um, Holy shit. The... Ugh, that's sitting heavy. And it's light. That's not supposed to happen. <clears throat> so, the first sip. The first sip was very alcohol forward. I think it was a little bit because it's my first sip of whiskey in a while. And there was notes there, but what really got me was the finish. I got to do that again. The, if I, the first thing I got on the finish was creme brulee and vanilla cake, just in a glass just going down my throat this shit is fire bro (laughs) <laughs> and I don't say that too often. This is, oh my God, it's coating my mouth with just <clears throat> all types of sweetness, like like batter, like cake batter. Like um, my family's going to be the only one who notice it, who who knows what I'm saying because there is a little bit of a chocolate on the note on the palate that I'm getting. It tastes like a halfway bar. Like every single, basically, a halfway bar is dough or like batter chocolate chips in there, more batter. It's it, I don't even know what it consists of, but it's been a family dessert forever. So if you're listening to this, probably just Kale um, and maybe my mom and dad, this whiskey tastes like a high-proof halfway bar. 
That's that's what this is. It's a high proof halfway bar. This is a dessert in a glass with a lot of alcohol in it that'll get you messed up. Uh, it stays in your mouth just with all types of sweetness on there. The front of the palette is a bit darker. I get a little bit of chocolate and a little bit more oak on there as well. There's going to be oak in this. It's 13 years old in a barrel, so there's got to be oak in it. But everything after that just gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter as it transitions to the mid palette, back palette, down you know, to the finish. It's all just consistently sweet. There's a bit of oak in there, some chocolate I get right on, right on the front. <coughs> there it is. I was waiting for myself to cough because I am just I am getting over being a little bit sicky poo as well. Ah, it's making my eyes water because it's so high proof and I haven't had whiskey in like three days. This is good stuff, man. This is so different than anything I've had. It tastes like whiskey. But it's so sweet. It's a it's a high proof halfway bar. I wish you guys, if you guys eat halfway bars, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. I don't think most of you guys do, but this is a high proof halfway bar. This is just cake batter, vanilla, some chocolate, a little bit of oak. <clears throat> there is something else I'm getting. I don't know what it is. There, it's it's got a spice to it as well. Maybe some cinnamon, but it's not. It's not like prevalent. Like it's there on the front palette. I would say the front of the palette is cinnamon, chocolate, all the sweetness as well, but cinnamon and chocolate thrown in there. And then that all kind of goes away as it transitions to the back of the palette to the finish. And then it the finish stays with you for a solid minute. I mean, it just stays in your chest, stays in your gullet, stays in your in your system, in your soul. This is way different than I thought it was going to be. I, I knew it was going to be sweet. I didn't think it was going to be this sweet. It's almost, dare I say, a little too sweet. Yeah, this stuff's dangerous. <clears throat> this is good stuff. Um, if we're thinking about a score, I've given you all the notes that I can give you. If I'm thinking about a score here, man, I'm... $100 is a little bit steep. $100 is a little steep, I'm not going to lie. Because this is definitely the best Penelope product that I've had so far. The Architect was fantastic. Um, the, the regular four grain from Penelope is great. The Toasted Series, Barrel Strength, which I don't think I've done on the show yet, is great. I just don't know. I mean, this is by far the best tasting. I just, $100 is $100. That's a lot. That's like a quarter tank of gas these days. So if I'm thinking of a score, uh, I'm going to go everything considered. Um, man, this is a solid, like, for 100 bucks. Right around Midwinter Night's Dram price. Uh, uh, it's so good. It's so good, though. I'm going to give this a 9.0. This is going to break the 9s for me. This is just so different. This is so unique. And it might not be for everybody. If you're not a fan of sweet whiskey, this might not be for you. But this is right up my alley, man. I love the sweetness on here. The fact that it's so high proof means I can have the rest of this glass and be set for the rest of the night. It's not going to be the case. But still, 9.0. 9.0. Bravo, Mike and Danny. This is a fantastic pour. And I'm so happy I dropped a hundo on this. I'm so, gra I'm so happy I dropped a Franklin on this bad boy. And I... uh and I got this whiskey now. I'm excited to share this with my friends and family. And um, I, I, this is mind-blowing. I, mean, I can't wait to finish this glass. So that's going to do it for the episode today, you guys. Um, 
Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed my UFC 274 preview. I hope you enjoyed my Penelope 13-year American Light Whiskey review. Um, again, everything's going to be timestamped below. So if you want to go back to certain parts, you can either go back to my UFC 274 recap or preview or go to the review. They'll both be timestamped below. But um, yeah, if you're gonna if you see this Penelope out, definitely get it. Uh, hit up Penelope Bourbon on all their socials. They do a great job. Again. In the next few years, Penelope is going to be allocated. They're just doing everything right, and they just have, you know, Penelope, Smoke wa- and Smoke Wagon. I put Rye 3 up there as well. They're going to be up there very soon. They're not as prominent as Penelope or as um, Smoke Wagon yet, but they will be up there. But those are going to be the three ba- the three big boys in the, in the craft game coming up soon. Um, and, man, just delicious stuff. Just delicious stuff. Um if you haven't already, make sure if you're listening, if you're at this point in the show and you're not subscribed, just subscribe to the damn show. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, every other thing. Leave me a rating and review on Apple Podcasts if you enjoy my my reviews, if you enjoy my banter about whatever we talk about. If you listen to the show, just leave me a rating and review. It takes two seconds, and I would very much appreciate it. Uh, social medias, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all who gives a dram. Um, Make sure you are checking out Great Fine Media. That's who presents this podcast for you guys. Um, Bourbon with Friends. Check us out everywhere. It's my other podcast that I co-host with Paul. Check us out everywhere. Um, and I think that's going to do it. I think that's going to do it. So until next week, you guys, uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for drinking whiskey with me. And always remember, whiskey's the water of life. So let's start living.